Hey brothers and sisters in Christ, I just want to um, share um, a testimony and um, ask for prayers. Um, the word says um, for us in James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And um, I believe that we ought to pray for each other. And this morning, I prayed for you guys. I prayed that the Lord would just pour out a special blessing upon everyone that he brings to my YouTube channels. That um, the favor of God would be upon you. That he would bless you and prosper you in every area of your life. Your soul your um, relationship, your marriage if you're married, um, your health, your finances, your ministry, in every area of your life, that he would not only pour the windows, open up the windows of heaven and pour his blessings upon you, but that he would pour out his spirit upon you and I, our family members, our loved ones, our children, our spouse, if we have one, um, and children if we have them, um, that God would just pour out his spirit upon us and upon them as his word says that he will do in the last days. And we know that we're in the last days. So I pray for you guys. You guys are on my heart, my thoughts every day. Um, I may not know your names and your faces, but um, in spirit, I pray for you and God knows who you are and God knows what you need. And um, so I pray in the spirit um, as well in my spiritual language. And so that's what I was doing today. And I just felt impressed upon my heart to share this testimony. It's not like um, a glorious, beautiful uh, testimony of victory or anything like that. It's just um, raw, real, being transparent with you of... Um, the struggles of life um, and how I believe, according to the word of God, how he wants us as children of God to deal with our issues. So, um, as you know, um, some of you know uh, that I've been struggling with um, some devastation, brokenness, heartbreak um, in my family within the last um, couple months. So, I am healing and the Lord is strengthening me every day. I can feel my spirit man, my spirit man just, um, you know, being strengthened from glory to glory every day. I can feel it. I can sense it. And I know that God is faithful and I know it in my heart that um, he's drying my tears and he's um, showing me uh, visions and dreams of things to come that he is doing a new thing and that for me to trust in him and to just keep my eyes fixed on him and just continue to surrender everything every aspect of my life you know the good the bad the ugly the the pain the the weaknesses the failures you know um, the small and big uh, victories, you know, the little and big blessings to count them all and present them all at the altar and bring him a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving during uh, this season of trials and testing. And um, so I'm in the valley right now, but um, God is using this time to train me, to raise me up as a um, a warrior in Christ who is choosing to put on the armor of God, the full armor of God daily and rising, standing on the promises of God alone in his unfailing love and all of his glorious promises. And um, although I am doing that, there are moments in my life like yesterday was a, a good example, horrible example where I slip back in my flesh um, due to the the pain, the the heartaches, and the pressure, the stress that um, that I am walking through in this season. 
I started doing real estate full time the end of January, February. So ever since then, I bless God that um, I have been busy, very busy, uh, working with new clients and new leads coming um, from, you know, uh, different um, avenues and different lead sources and things like that. So I'm thankful that I have people to work with, but it has been overwhelming and consuming at times. You know, especially when you're working day and night, working your fingers to the bone for free because you're working for yourself. Um, nobody's giving you a paycheck. You're not clocking in and clocking out and getting paid at the end of the week. You just work, work, work day and night, you know, for weeks and um, sometimes months at a time before you ever see your first <laughs> reward <laughs> at closing. So I have been just working my behind off um you know, seven days a week, I don't work um, crazy hours seven days a week, but Monday through Fridays, I work um, a lot of hours, you know, but on weekends, I back off a little bit. I do work. I have to work. You have to work real estate on weekends. But, um, you know, with my sons, I, I'm trying to balance um, the mother thing and, you know, because you still have food, you have to cook, you have to go grocery shopping, you still have to Make sure the laundries are done. Is it laundry or laundries? Probably laundry. Well, anyways, I always have a hard time figuring out when to add the S and when not to add the S. English is very challenging when it comes to that for me. So trying to balance my personal life as just, you know, being mommy and um, taking care of the household stuff and um, working my business and still have um, time to listen to what God is trying to do in my life, what he's saying, so I can share it to bring encouragement and exhortation to you, my brothers and sisters. You guys are very, very important to me and to God, and especially to God. You know, he loves you with an everlasting love, and he tells us in his word, exhort each other daily. So that is always in the forefront of my thoughts and my heart um, to give whatever it is that the Lord gives me just to encourage somebody that might be down and discouraged like I have been. And it's your words, your prayers, your songs, your um, notes, everything that, that all of you guys and my brothers and sisters around the world have been sending me, texting me, messaging me, emailing me, you know, all of those words of life gave me hope and gave me strength. And um, I could not have gone through the last couple months without the true love of God in you guys. And I mean that. And the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God that's just been here, you know, comforting me and carrying me through and speaking and breathing His life and hope and faith into me. So whatever God puts in me, I want to be able to give it back. You know, uh, the word says that to those who've been given much, much is required. And that's how I see my life. I've been given much, much mercies, much forgiveness, much compassion, much of everything, you know, abundant life of peace, joy, righteousness in the Holy Spirit. You know my testimony. I was bound by all sorts of demonic wickedness before I came to Christ. Alcohol, sin galore, you know, unrighteousness. I was an instrument of wickedness. And until the Lord saved me and delivered me from the grip of Satan. So I have been given much and I can't just sit and go about my business without sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of forgiveness, mercy, and grace, and hope, and faith in him. So let me get to my short little message before it becomes 20 minutes again. <laughs> I can talk forever. But um, this weekend, I am ashamed to confess this, but I feel prompted to confess it. Um, I had a showing... Um, at four o'clock. So, and Ethan, my youngest son is with me all the time. So he goes to pretty much most of my showings if it's after school hours and on weekends. So 15 minutes before we had to leave, and the showing was only like five minutes from here. So it was nearby. 15 minutes before we had to leave, he had to go use the restroom. 
and he comes out and his shorts are all wet and now we're down to 10 minutes and I'm freaking out because I don't like to be late to my showings. I want to be there five to 10 minutes early, open the house, walk through and be prepared for my clients. So he comes out and his shorts was wet and um, I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, there's shorts in the dryer. So he goes to the dryer and he's in there. I thought he was just going to change his shorts, but he wasn't. He closed the door in the laundry room. And he was butt naked and I didn't know. And um, he's going through the dryer looking for shorts. He couldn't find any. And um, he's like, mommy, I thought you said there's shorts in the dryer. And I was under so much stress, so much pressure. Um, just, you know, like I said, from the the pain of brokenness that I've been living and um, just working with clients that um, had scheduled show uh, um, closings and last minute canceling closing due to, um, you know, unsatisfactory um, home inspections and things like that. So all of these things were all inside me. And when that happened, I was like, just wear something. I don't care. Just wear something. So my precious son started crying. <sighs> it breaks my heart because I don't like to raise my voice at him. And I yelled at him and I said, I don't care. Just wear something. And he took it because he's so sensitive. He's so precious. Such a beautiful soul. He's so beautiful. He's amazing. He started crying. And he thought I meant, I don't care about you. That's what he thought. That's what he heard. And so he was crying and I got him into the car and we were going to the showing. And, um, you know, like I said, it's only five minutes from here and halfway there. And I said, <sighs> I'm so sorry I yelled at you. Mommy's so sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And he, he was still crying. He's like, I forgive you, Mommy. You said you didn't care. And he said, I said, I'm sorry, baby. I meant I didn't care if you wore pants or shorts. I didn't mean that I didn't care about you. I love you with all of my heart. I love you more than anything. Please forgive me. And he said, Mommy, I already forgave you. So we got to the showing and, um, you know, working with my clients. And he was okay. He was, um, you know, my son was fine. And later on that night, last night, once I got on my knees and was just praying about other matters, um, I wanted to hear what God had to say and immediately he put that in my heart and I just bawled in his presence. I just cried my heart out to him and just repeatedly asked the Lord to not just forgive me. I knew he had already forgiven me because I've already asked, but I needed him to heal me. I needed him to make me whole from the inside out because it is true when people say that hurt people hurt people. And the last thing I want to do is hurt my own son who is so precious, who is the most important living human being in my life. And I never want to hurt him like that. And words are powerful. Words have the power to give life, kill, destroy, break, tear. And so I was asking the Lord to make his little heart whole and that there would not be any defilement from my words and my anger and um, any brokenness, any wounds. And that he would just restore him wholly and just restore his precious little soul and make him whole and um, in my own as well. And um, in all the areas of all my relationship, you know, in my life right now. And I can't go into details with you. So it's been on my heart that 
I know that I am not the only mom out there that is struggling with um, trying to balance work. And on top of that, you know, this weekend um, I was cooking, trying to make healthy meals for my three sons. And I asked them all, I'm like, okay, um, I have some chicken. What do you guys want me to make? So one said fried chicken, one said yellow Indian Cambodian curry. And Ethan, my youngest, said, I like um, drumstick. Uh, so he want fried drumsticks. So I'm like, well, I don't have any drumsticks, but I have chicken. So I ended up marinating half to fry later for the evening and then making Indian yellow Cambodian curry for lunch during the day. And so when I was done with that, um, I was calling them to come to the table to eat lunch. And my second son, Micah, had um, a bad attitude. He's like, I just want pizza and yogurt. I'm like, no. And my Micah has diabetes. So I purposely try to make him fresh food, good, healthy food, as opposed to, you know, frozen pizza, which he can have from time to time. I don't mind that. I give him pizza. But um, I made fresh chicken and I wanted him to eat that because it's healthier. And so he was giving me a really bad um, time, bad attitude. He was walking away and didn't want to eat it. So I'm like, I am going to tell your daddy. Um, and so I, I texted my, um, my former husband. I said, hey, this is not acceptable. He's got a bad attitude. I worked very hard in buying this food and cooking it up for him. And so um, his daddy, we have a good relationship, um, peaceful, amicable, um, just blessed with um, good relationship in our families. So um, he's like, you, you know, he eats what we give him to eat. Tell him you're going to beat the devil out of him. And so <laughs> I was like, I can't say that. So I thought about it. And um, 10 minutes later, I said, you know, I am going to say that. So I went to him. I said, hey, I talked to your daddy and he told me to beat the devil out of you if you don't straighten up with your bad attitude. You understand me? And so <laughs> he was like, uh oh, uh oh they're in sync so i better straighten up my attitude you could see his wheels <laughs> ticking so um after he ate his lunch we all got dressed and we went to the backyard and started raking the leaves um the pine straws that were back there um and all four of us went to work i borrowed the neighbor's rakes i borrowed two rakes we had one so all four of us were out there working in the backyard together for about an hour and a half and then i took them out for ice cream but they were fine um and what's my point my point is that <clears throat> you know things do not go well always in life you know um we will meet disappointments. People will disappoint us. They will walk out on us. Um, deals will fall through. Things that we had anticipated on happening doesn't happen. Um, relationship goes bad. Um, and attitudes and bad behaviors will come up. No matter how hard we try, we face it on a daily basis and... Um, all we can do is repent of our sins, you know, confess our shortcomings to our little ones and to whoever we let down. We let people down. We hurt people. They hurt us. And we just have to be honest and be humble and confess our faults to one another, as scripture says. And God will heal us and he will cleanse us and he will give us a clean slate to start over again. A new day. So I'm going to share just a couple little scriptures with you and end this. I just wanted to bring this raw, ugly testimony of my own weaknesses and life um, in hope to encourage somebody. Um, because I'm confident that you guys have some, some messy business in your home, in your relationship, in your life as well. And as mothers, we usually take it very personal and... Um, just feel like crumbling and um, sometimes it's hard to get back up. But we can rise up in God's forgiveness, God's unfailing love, uh, mercy that's new every day. And so this is the purpose of my video, just to encourage us mothers or fathers or whoever 
because we all have weaknesses, we all fail, and we all stumble and fumble every day. We just have to get back up and try again in the strength of God. We can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. Amen. So let me read um, some inspirational scriptures and message here. It says, God never remembers a sin that is confessed. This is the power of confession. You do not want unconfessed sins in your souls. It's like poison. It will defile every part of our lives. We have to guard our heart. We have to ask the Holy Spirit to go in there and cleanse us. Search us, O God, and see if there's any wicked ways in me and cleanse me. Purify my heart. Amen. Every day we need to do this. Every day we need to get on our knees and ask the Lord to search us and cleanse us and purify us. Amen. Put your sins behind you by keeping God before you. Amen. I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Isaiah 43, 25. Yes, I'm tempted to think about my failures from yesterday and tempted to be ashamed and be sad, but I can't be because God said, I will forgive your sins and not remember it. So we should not torment ourselves and keep on going back there to yesterday and pulling it back out and feeling bad and horrific and shameful and guilty and condemned over and over again. We need to put our sins behind us. Amen. Because his, his mercies is new every day. And we live in the mercies and grace of God for today. And here's one more. Jesus is the way, the only way to abundant life and eternal life. Abundant life means not necessarily rich in um, silver and gold, bank accounts and things like that, um, although it could mean that. But abundant life in Christ is joy, you know, peace, righteousness in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom of God is. That's what the word of God says, what the kingdom of God is. Amen. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. John 10.10 10, uh, through 11. Okay, I'll leave with this one. One of my favorite scriptures. You only value Jesus at all when you value him above all. Amen. Let me read that again. You only value Jesus at all when you value him above all. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. Amen. Walking in the light, walking in truth, transparency, honesty, integrity, walking in the light, not in darkness, not in deceptions, not in lies, amen, not in deceits, in selfishness, self-centeredness, you know, not in pride, walking in the light, walking in the truth. That's worshiping God in spirit and in truth, amen, walking in the light as he is in the light. Then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Walking in the light is confessing our sin, repenting of our sin and turning from our evil. That's walking in the light as he is in the light because God is light in him. There is no darkness. So if we walk in the light as he is in the light. Not only do we have fellowship with one another, you and I, who are in Christ, in the light, but the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So this is why it's imperative. It is absolutely imperative that we confess our sins, our faults, one to another. Give it to the Lord. Don't act like you have it all together. You know, that you're this... Um, just no issue, so strong, got everything under control. 
none of us do. And if we think that we do, then we're walking in deceit, deception, lies, and pride. None of us have it all together. You know, we need to come boldly to the throne of grace and confess our faults to the Lord and weaknesses and lay it all down at the altar. Amen. He already knows, but it is healing to our soul to confess our sin and ask for forgiveness so he can cleanse us, strengthen us, and pour his anointing, his power, his presence. Because when we have a clean conscience, then we walk in joy, in peace, and there's songs in our heart again. Amen. But when our conscience are not clean before God, before man, um, then usually there is no songs of joy and peace there. So it's important to cleanse our soul, cleanse our conscience, confess our sins, receive the mercy of God, receive forgiveness, and arise in His love, in His power, amen, in His word, amen. In the name of Jesus, I pray that this blesses you. I love you all, and I'll talk to you soon. God bless you.